friends, it's Elizabeth Cortez with Yoga Den, here today bringing you a chair yoga sequence. Um, I want to give a special shout out to my friends at Soleya, if you're watching. I miss you guys so much, and you've been on my mind and in my prayers, and I can't wait to see y'all again. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and get started. If you can find a chair without any arms, a nice, good, sturdy chair without any arms, that would be preferable. Um, you may also want to grab some props, and you don't have to have the official yoga props. You can improvise, but a blanket might be nice, maybe draped over the back of the chair, or you can place it on the seat of the chair if that's more comfortable for you. Um, a strap, if you have a strap, great. If not, you can maybe use a tie or something like that. And a block is nice. If you don't have a block, you can maybe use a book or find something that works. Um, and we can also use the chair uh, to help modify as well. So let's go ahead and um, we'll start in a comfortable seated position. Just noticing all the places where your body is supported by the chair. We want the feet planted firmly on the ground or if they don't touch you can also place the feet on top of a block or a book or a footstool whatever you have handy the spine is nice and long feeling an invisible thread pulling the crown of the head up out of the hips Shoulders are up, back, and down, and the chest is open. Opening up the heart. And we'll start to bring the awareness to the breath. Maybe deepening the breath. Noticing how long the inhale is compared to the exhale. Inhaling through the nose to help filter the air through the nostrils. And exhaling through the nose or the mouth. And you can continue with this deep breath. Or if you'd like, you can add ujjayi breath into your practice. For ujjayi breath, you can place a hand three or four inches in front of the mouth, take a good inhale, and on the exhale, imagine that the hand is a mirror and you're fogging up the mirror. So you might try that a few times. Then replace the hand back on the knee and continue this breath, but now with the lips closed. And you'll hear a sound in the inner ear, feel a vibration in the back of the throat. We're warming up the body from the inside out with this ujjayi breath. But whether you practice ujjayi breath or not, I just would like for you to be mindful of your breath throughout the practice today. The breath unites the body with the mind. And we live our life one breath at a time. All right, so when you're ready, maybe scoot up to the edge of your chair if that feels comfortable for you. If you need the back support, by all means, you know, you can continue to rest the back on the back of the chair. But if, if, if you feel up to it, maybe scoot up forward on the chair. Inhale, feel that invisible thread, pulling the crown of the head up out of the hips. Shoulders up, back and down. We have the hands resting on the tops of the thighs, just above the knees. We'll take a good inhale and on the exhale, Draw the chin towards the chest. And then on the inhale, we'll lift the gaze towards the ceiling, being mindful not to compress the back of the neck, 
stretching the front of the throat, keeping the shoulders away from the ears. Following your breath, exhaling, taking the chin towards the chest. Inhaling, lifting the gaze. Inhale, bringing the gaze straight forward. On the exhale, we'll take the left ear towards the left shoulder. Inhale here. Exhale, taking the chin towards the chest. Bringing the right ear to the right shoulder. Inhale here on the exhale, taking it to the other side. Using your breath to guide the movement. Exhale, taking the chin towards the chest. Inhale, bringing the gaze straight forward. On the exhale, start to roll the shoulders. Going in one direction. And then in the opposite direction. Then we'll inhale and bring the shoulders up to the ears. And exhale, release. On the next inhale, we're gonna lift the chin and the chest, bringing them forward, pressing the chest forward through the arms, lifting the gaze, stretching the front of the throat, and bringing a little bend into the lower back if that feels okay for you. And then on the exhale, arching the back, turning the gaze towards the belly button. And the movement originates in the pelvis, so we're Tilting the pelvis back and forth here, inhaling into cow and exhaling into cat. Noticing the movement of each vertebra. Let's do one more inhaling, stretching the front of the body, and exhale, stretching the back of the body. And let's inhale, coming back up to a tall seated position. We'll inhale, bringing the arms up overhead, perhaps taking the gaze towards the thumbs. And exhale, let's bring the hands to heart center. And you might want to develop an intention for your practice. Maybe it's a physical goal you have in mind. Maybe you're working on strength or balance or flexibility. Maybe there's a situation or a person that you've been thinking of. Maybe you have a goal that you're working towards.
whatever it is, let that be your drishti, your intention for your practice. And if you ever start to feel distracted, you can return to this intention to help guide you back to your center. So let's inhale, we'll bring the arms back up overhead. And on the exhale, let's bring it into a twist. So you can bring the hand to the back of the chair if that feels comfortable to you. The opposite hand to the opposite thigh. Inhale, lengthening the spine. Exhale, twisting. You can also bring this back hand to the side of the chair, whatever feels better for you, or the hip. Inhale, lengthening the spine. On the exhale, twisting a little bit more. And the twist is originating in the waist, but eventually the gaze may follow over that back shoulder. We'll inhale, coming back to center. Inhale, bringing the hands up overhead. On the exhale, take it to the other side. Keeping the feet planted firmly on the ground. Inhale, lengthening the spine. Exhale, twisting. And it's really important to be sure that you drink plenty of water to flush out toxins after our yoga practice. And we'll inhale, bringing it back to center, taking the gaze towards the thumbs. Exhale, bringing the hands to heart center. Okay, let's start to um, walk the feet out into a wide-legged straddle pose. Making sure the kneecaps are pointing the same direction as the toes. Inhale, lengthening the spine, nice and tall. Place the hands on the thighs and on the exhale. If it feels okay, folding forward. We're just sort of warming up right now, so don't worry about going too deep into this. We're just subtly folding forward, hinging from the hips. And let's inhale, coming back up to seated. We'll walk the feet back towards each other. And then placing the hands on the sides of the chair for support, or if you have a chair with arms, you can place them on the arms. We'll start to rotate one ankle, wiggle the toes. Just warming up the ankle and the toes. And then we'll start to bend and straighten the knee. Point and flex the foot. Maybe start to bring the hip into this, warming up the hip. And place that foot down. And then let's start with the other foot, wiggle the toes, make circles with the ankle. Point and flex the foot. Bend and straighten the knee. And then see about bringing the hip into it. And then we'll exhale and bring that foot back down to the floor. Sitting nice and tall. Inhale, let's bring the arms up overhead. And on the exhale, folding forward, hinging from the hips. Modifying as needed.
Let's inhale, coming halfway up. Exhale, forward fold. And on the next inhale, let's come up one vertebra at a time. Chin's tucked into the chest. Head's the last thing to rise, coming back to a nice, tall, seated position. So let's see about lifting the left knee and flexing the left foot. You can hug the hands around the shin or perhaps underneath the thigh, whatever works better for you. If you want, you can gently uh, rock back and forth. If it is accessible to you, you may take that foot into the opposite hand and you can hold the knee with the other hand or possibly even hook the elbows around the foot and the knee. Listen to your body. Modify as needed. You can gently rock back and forth. Take it from side to side. Noticing what comes up for you. And if you're playing with your edge, that's great. If you're pushing beyond the point of slight discomfort into pain, that's when you know you need to ease back and modify. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll inhale, lengthen the spine. We're sitting evenly on both sitting bones, flexing that foot. Hugging the hands around the knee or around the back of the thigh. And then see about bringing one arm away. Pressing the chest open, sitting nice and tall. Focusing on your ujjayi breath. And if you feel like it, maybe bring the other hand away. Breathing deeply all the way into the pelvis. Exhaling, squeezing the lower abs. Another good inhale. On the exhale, let's bring the hands back around the knee. And if it's in your practice, perhaps see about bringing that ankle on top of the opposite thigh just above the knee. This is our pigeon pose. Inhaling, lengthening the spine. Exhaling, releasing any tension in the body. Inhaling, bringing healing energy into any tight spots. Exhaling, releasing tension. If you feel like you need a deeper stretch, you can inhale, lengthen the spine. On the exhale, fold forward, hinging from the hips. Into our chair version of pigeon pose. We'll inhale, coming back up to seated, and exhale, let's rest that foot back on the floor. Inhale, lengthening the spine, nice and tall. Exhale, folding forward, nice flat back, hinging from the hips, relaxing the head, the neck, and the shoulders. Then inhaling, coming halfway up. Exhale, forward fold. And inhale, let's come up one vertebra at a time, the chin tucked into the chest. The head's the last thing to rise. Now, if for any reason you need to not have your heart elevated above the head, you can always modify the forward fold just by coming down part way. You don't have to fold completely to where the heart is elevated above the head. Okay, so let's do the same thing on the other side. So we're going to see about hugging that right knee in towards the chest. You can point and flex the foot, make circles with the ankle if you need to. Maybe gently rock back and forth or take it from side to side. 
You might see about bringing that foot into the hand, or if you're feeling up to it, hugging the elbows around the foot and the knee, listening to your body, modifying as needed. rocking back and forth like you're cradling a baby and then whenever you're ready let's bring it into our boat pose on the other side so you can hug the hands around the shin just below the knee or behind the thigh inhale Lengthen the spine, shoulders away from the ears, pressing the chest forward, flexing the foot. See about bringing one hand away. And this other foot's planted on the ground, but we're really using the core here. You can see about bringing the other ham, ham, bringing the other arm away. Inhale, lengthen. Breathing fully, deep down into the pelvis, exhaling, engaging the lower abs. Another good inhale. And on the exhale, we'll hug the hands back around the knee. And then if you're ready to put the foot down, you can. If you'd like to work on pigeon pose, you can bring that ankle to the top of the other thigh. Inhale, lengthening the spine, exhale. Maybe gently pressing into that knee to open up the hip a little bit more if that feels good to you. Inhaling, sending healing energy to any tight spots in the body. Exhaling, integrating that healing energy. Releasing tension. You can keep it here if you'd like. You can inhale, lengthen the spine. And exhale, fold forward, hinging from the hips. Coming into chair pigeon. Then we'll inhale, coming back up to seated. And exhale. Rest that foot back down on the floor. Inhale, lifting up nice and tall. Exhale, rooting down into the seat. Feeling space in the spine. And let's walk the feet out into our goddess pose. Making sure the kneecaps are pointing the same direction as the toes. Bringing the hands to the thighs. Inhaling, lengthening the spine. On the exhale, let's bring one shoulder in, take the other shoulder out, taking the gaze over that back shoulder. Noticing where you're feeling any stretching. Inhaling, breathing into that spot and exhaling, maybe twisting a little bit more. And inhaling, we'll bring it back to center. Exhale, take it to the other side. And then inhale, we'll bring it back up to center. So for this next part, you can work on the warrior poses. If you'd prefer, you can just keep working on like this wide leg straddle pose or our goddess pose. Um, but if you'd like to try warrior two, we're going to slide on the chair so that we the bottom is partially coming off the chair and the chair is completely supporting one of the thighs. So if this feels 
un too unstable for you, continue working on your goddess pose, okay? So if you're able to get into this, you might try to see about drawing a straight line from the heel of this foot to the arch of the back foot. And you want to rotate the outside of that back foot the, uh, towards the floor. So sometimes there's a tendency to roll it up. You want to keep rolling that outside edge of the foot down to the floor. And you might have a bend in this knee when you're first starting, but maybe work on starting to straighten that out, pulling this hip back. The shoulders are stacked over the hips, so my shoulders and hips are pointing straight towards you right now. This other knee is opening out to the side, so the hips are really opening here. We're going to inhale and bring the arms up to shoulder height. Exhale, draw the arm bones into the sockets and feel the fingertips magnetically pulling away from each other. A lot of different energies going on in the body here. And then on the exhale, we're going to turn the gaze over that front hand, keeping the face soft, even though the body's being stretched in a lot of different directions here. Focusing on your breath. inhale bringing it back to center and on the exhale we're gonna rotate the shoulders and the hips to point in the same direction as this bent knee and so we're also going to be rotating the back foot rotating the heel up rotating that knee to point in that same direction we're making our way into warrior one this chair is a little bit tall for that I'm going to kind of slide off the edge here a little bit. So shoulders are stacked over the hips. Inhale, feel that invisible cord drawing the crown of the head up. Bring the arms by the ears, squeezing the imaginary block between the hands. Oh my goodness, this is really tough, you guys. <laughs> Even though it's on a chair, oh my gosh. On the exhale, maybe turn the gaze towards the ceiling. Inhale, bringing it back up. On the exhale, it's bringing the hands back down. So I was just thinking about this. I probably could have brought a block under this foot up here. Might have made it a little more comfortable. Let's come back into goddess pose. Let's bring the hands to thighs. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, folding forward, hinging from the hips. Inhale, let's come up one vertebra at a time. Head's the last thing to rise. And then let's bring it into our warrior two on the other side. So we're sliding so that the chair is supporting most of this thigh. Rotating that back foot down so that the outside edge of the foot is rotating towards the floor. Maybe bend and straighten that back knee to help this hip open up. Opening this other knee, maybe gazing down towards the big toe, shoulders stacked over the hips, inhaling, bringing the arms up to shoulder height, exhale, drawing the arm bones into their sockets, feel the fingertips magnetically pulling away from each other. Another good inhale, lengthening the spine, and on the exhale, we'll take the gaze over the front hand. Grace under fire. back to center and as we exhale we're going to rotate this back heel up we're going to rotate the hips and the shoulders towards 
this knee here. I'm having a hard time on this chair. It's a little taller than our usual chairs at Celia. Okay, well inhale, bring the arms up by the ears, squeezing an imaginary block between the hands. You can also bring the arms into cactus arms, or bring them back behind you, clasping the hands, turning the gaze up towards the ceiling. And we'll inhale, bringing the arms by the ears, and exhale, bring the hands back down, and let's rotate it back into our goddess pose. the hands to the thighs, inhale, lengthen the spine, on the exhale, folding forward, inhale, coming up one vertebra at a time, the chin stretch into the chest, the head's the last thing to rise, all right, let's walk the feet back in towards each other, and if you have a block or a book or something like that, you might want to have it handy. Some people might not need one. It, it all depends on multiple factors, the length of your torso, the length of your legs, the, um, your flexibility level, different things like that. So we're going to take a good inhale and then exhale, fold forward, hinging from the hips. And we're going to bring the right hand to the block. The block's on the outside of the right foot. We're bringing the right hand to the block. Inhale, we'll peel the left hand up towards the ceiling, keeping both feet planted on the floor, taking the gaze towards that left hand. So this is like a seated version of triangle pose, and in a minute we're going to do a standing version of triangle pose using the chair um, as a support. Exhale, we'll bring it back down. Let's switch the block to the other side, placing the other hand on the block. Inhale, peeling the right hand up towards the ceiling. Inhale, exhale, bring it back down. Coming to your forward fold, then inhale, coming up one vertebra at a time, the chin's tucked into the chest, the head's the last thing to rise, exhale here, okay, and then let's inhale, bring the arms out to shoulder height, and then we'll rotate the palms face up, exhale, bringing the fingertips to the shoulders start to make little circles with the elbows. Letting the circles get a little bit bigger each time around. This is hummingbird. Until you've reached your full range of motion here. And then we'll bring them back to center. On the exhale, we'll start to make the circles going in the opposite direction now. Getting a little bit bigger every time. Bring it back to center. Exhale, bringing the elbows towards each other. Inhale, opening up the chest, drawing the shoulder blades together. Exhale, drawing the elbows towards each other in front of the body. Inhale, opening up the chest. Closing the elbows towards each other. Inhale, bringing it back to center, opening up the hands. 
Exhale, pointing the palms down and bringing the arms down alongside the body or bringing the hands onto the tops of the thighs. Just taking a moment here. And then we're gonna make our way to standing. Now, if you don't wanna do the standing part, you don't have to. This is just optional, okay? So, we are still gonna have the chair nearby for support. The first thing I'd like to do is chair pose without the chair. So, we're gonna gently rock back and forth. We'll have the toes pointing straight forward. Outside ridges of the feet are parallel to each other. We're coming into our Tadasana mountain pose to start with. Then we're gonna inhale, lift the toes, exhale, spread them apart, lower them one by one onto the mat or to the floor. Inhale, fill the thighs, lifting up out of the kneecaps, engaging the core, shoulders up, back and down, fingertips energized, nice and tall in mountain pose. And let's inhale, bring the arms up overhead, bring the hands together, exhale, bringing the hands to heart center, pressing the hands into each other like you're pushing yourself away from yourself, squeezing the shoulder blades together like you're holding on to an imaginary pencil between the shoulder blades, opening up the chest. And then exhale, imagine that you're sitting in an invisible chair. Using your ujjayi breath, focusing on the breath here. Inhale, maybe lifting the heels. Exhale, maybe dropping the hips. And we'll inhale, coming up onto the toes. Imagine someone's drawing your hands up towards the ceiling. And exhale, we'll bring it back down. All right. So you can always kind of hold on to the chair for support, okay, even when we're standing. Um, the next thing I'd like to work on is tree pose. So we're gonna start to bring the weight into the right foot. We'll make the left foot light and turn the left knee towards the side of the room. So we're opening up that hip. And you can practice bringing the hand away from the chair onto the hip if you'd like. If you want, you can bring the foot up to the calf. Or possibly even up above the knee, listening to your body. Just be, be mindful not to press the foot into the knee because it could kick out the joint. Okay, if you feel like bringing the arms up overhead into tree branches, Feel free, make this your own. And with these balancing poses, sometimes it helps to find something in the room that's not moving to focus your gaze on. Okay, let's exhale and bring it back down. We'll try the same thing on the other side. So we're gonna get a little micro bend in this left foot, feel a strong line of energy from the left heel to the hip, make the right foot light, turn just the right knee towards the side of the room. Maybe slide the foot up to the calf, maybe slide it up to the inner thigh, pressing the sole of the foot into the inner thigh, pressing the thigh into the foot. Maybe practice bringing the hand away from the chair. We're all on our own journey, so everyone's version of tree pose is gonna look different. So let's come behind the chair and um, we're gonna work on airplane pose. So you can have your hands on the back of the chair. 
You can also bring it to, if you have rungs on the back of your chair like I do, you can bring them to whichever rung works best for you as well. And we're gonna slide the left foot back. So we've got the toes on the right foot and the toes on the left foot all pointing straight forward. Shoulders pretty much stacked over the hips. They're pointing, the same, they're pointing towards the back of this chair. Okay. We're gonna get a nice bend into this front knee. Nice strong line of energy from the heel to the hip again. Really strengthening that standing leg. And then this back foot's gonna start to come up and we're gonna flex the foot. Inhale, lengthen from the heel all the way to the crown of the head. And on the exhale, we're gonna press the chest forward as we lift that back heel. And then inhale, we'll bring it back up. Step the left foot next to the right. And then we'll slide the left foot back, get that nice bend in, sorry, slide the right foot back, get a nice bend in the left knee, strong line of energy from the left heel to the hip. We're gonna start to shift all of our weight into that front foot, make the back foot light, flex that back foot, inhale, lengthen from the heel all the way through the crown of the head, all the way through the spine and the leg, and then on the exhale, we're going to press the chest forward as the leg comes up. So it's like we're, our body's a lever and, and the hip is the fulcrum. Inhale, bringing it back up. Stopping the right foot next to the left. All right, so from here, let's come around so that the, chair, the seat of the chair is facing you, or that you're, so you're facing the seat of the chair. We're gonna be working on our downward facing dog with the chair, and you can adjust how far away you are from the chair, depending on uh, what works for your body. Some folks are gonna to wanna to bring the hands to the back of the chair when they come down. Others might bring their hands to the seat of the chair. So it's up to you. Just modify as needed, go at your own pace, figure out what works best for you. So we're gonna step away from the chair. Inhale, bring the arms up overhead and exhale, fold forward with a nice flat back, bringing the hands to the back of the chair or to the seat, pressing the chest towards the floor, relaxing the head, relaxing the neck. Inhale, lifting the hips towards the ceiling. Exhale, releasing tension in the back of the body. And on the inhale, we're going to come up one vertebra at a time. The chin's touching on the chest, the head's elastic to rise. Shoulders are up, back, and down. All right, now let's work on triangle pose using the chair as a prop for the hands this time. So we'll be working on the leg part of this. Again, if this is in your practice, great, or if it's, it's something you want to try, then go for it. If it's not something you feel comfortable with, then just skip it. You can fast forward to the video. That's the advantage of having a video. So we want to make sure that the heels are in line with each other here. And the left toes are pointing straight towards the side of the room. The right toes are pointing straight forward, so they're at a 90 degree angle to each other. Shoulders are stacked over the hips. We'll inhale, bring the arms up to shoulder height. 
on the exhale, we're going to shift the torso in the same direction as that left foot. So we're not coming forward, we're shifting to the side. You might even feel the oblique muscles engaging here. And then as you exhale, bringing it down into your version of triangle. You might not even need the chair. You might just stack the shoulders one on top of the other. Or you can use the chair, the seat of the chair as a support. You can turn the gaze down towards the floor for more grounding, straight ahead, or up towards that lifted arm for more energy and more of a balanced challenge. Inhaling, opening up the chest, exhaling, twisting all the way from the hips through the crown of the head. And then let's inhale, bringing it back up. On the exhale, we are going to twist the rib cage. We're twisting from the waist, twisting the torso towards the chair. Okay. Inhale, lengthening the spine. And on the next exhale, we're going to bring the right hand to the chair and we're going to peel the left hand up towards the ceiling. Being mindful to keep this back edge of the back foot rotating down towards the floor. Inhaling, opening up the chest. Exhaling, twisting from the hips all the way to the crown of the head. And inhale, we're going to bring it back up. Exhale, bring the hands down. Rotate the left toes to point straight forward. And then we're going to step the feet together. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. So we'll have the right toes pointing towards the chair, the left toes pointing the other direction, heels in line with each other. Inhale, bringing the arms up to shoulder height. Exhale, we're going to shift. Inhale, lengthen and exhale. We'll bring the right hand down to the chair, or you can just have it here, taped to the side of the uh, leg. Inhale, let's bring it back up. Exhale, we're going to rotate the torso towards the chair. And then bring the left hand down, peeling the right hand up, making sure that back foot is in contact with the floor. Inhale, lengthen, and exhale, rotate. Inhaling, bringing it back up. Let's rotate the feet so the toes are all pointing the same direction. And then we'll walk the feet together. And let's get our strap. If you'd like to go ahead and come down into the chair now, you're welcome to do so. I guess I will do that. The only problem with having the chair here for this is that um, it, it can kind of get in the way when we come back with the strap. But um, just if you scoot towards the front of the chair, you might be able to avoid that. So we're going to bring the strap between the two hands, put about three feet or so between the hands. You're going to need to make adjustments based on your range of motion and comfort level. You might uh, wrap the strap around the hands just for a little more stability. Okay, then we're going to inhale, keeping the strap taut, lifting it up overhead. And then on the exhale, we'll take it to one side, keeping the arms straight. Inhale, bringing it back to center. Exhale, take it to the other side. Keeping the strap taut. Inhale to center. Exhale to the side.
Let's do one more here. We'll inhale, bringing it back up to center. Exhale, we'll start to slowly, keeping the strap taut, bring it down in front of the body. And inhale, bringing it back up overhead. And then on the exhale, bringing the strap behind you, experimenting with your range of motion, just being mindful, especially if you've had any injuries. Inhaling, bringing it back up overhead. Exhale, holding the strap taut, bringing it down in front. strap around the left foot. Okay. And you can keep the right hand on the chair for support here if you'd like. We're going to press through the sole of the left foot. You can also keep the right hand on the hip, whatever works better for you. On the exhale, we're going to take the left foot out to the side. Pressing through the heel, making any adjustments you need on the strap. And we'll inhale, bringing it back to center. Exhale, pressing through the heel, lowering the leg inch by inch down to the mat, <clears throat> down to the floor. And we'll take the strap around the other foot. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. Inhaling, bringing it back to center. And exhale, pressing through the heel, bringing that foot back down. Let's bring the strap away. All right, so I want to close by first doing our thumb gazing and then some Nadi Shodana, and then we'll do our final meditation and prayer. Um, so let's work on our thumb gazing. So we're going to bring the left hand out straight out from the shoulder and the thumb is going to be in the so-so position. We're going to focus our gaze on the thumbnail. And on the inhale, lift the thumb, keeping the eyeballs focused on the thumb. Nothing else is moving except the thumb and the eyes. On the exhale, bringing it back down. Moving through your full range of vision, keeping the face still, just moving the eyeballs. And trying not to blink too much, I know it's hard, but avoiding blinking. Bring it back up to center. Make that into a thumbs up. On the exhale, taking the thumb out to the side, keeping the eyeballs focused on the thumbnail, not moving the face. Inhale, bringing it back to center, trying to keep the eyes focused on the thumbnail. We'll work with this a few times.
rest of that hand. We close the eyes for a moment here. Take a couple of breaths. And then we'll bring the right hand out, the right arm coming straight out from the shoulder, the thumb in the so-so position, focusing the gaze on your thumbnail. Inhale, bringing it up to your full range of vision, keeping the face still, exhaling, bringing it back down. Here. Inhaling, bringing it back to center. We'll switch it to thumbs up. Exhale, taking the thumb out to the side, keeping the gaze focused on the thumbnail, not moving the face. Inhaling, bringing it back to center. not to blink. I feel like I've been blinking like crazy. Let's do one more time. Exhale, bring that hand down, close the eyes. Take a couple of breaths here. And then we're going to start rubbing the hands together, keeping the eyes closed, rubbing the hands to build up friction and heat. And once you've built up heat in the hands, we're going to cup the hands over the closed eyes, helping the eyeballs to relax the eye muscles. So now for our Nadi Shodana, we can bring the left hand on top of the knee and bring the um, thumb to the forefinger for Jnana Mudra. You can also keep the hand grounded if you'd like. And then we'll take the peace fingers of the right hand and bring the pointer finger and the ring finger, the peace fingers, to the place between the two eyebrows. Okay. So we're going to start by gently blocking the right nostril by pressing the thumb to close the nostril at the very top, gently. So we'll inhale through the left side only. Exhale through the left side. Then inhale through the left again. And we'll release the thumb and now we're going to gently block the left nostril using the ring finger and exhale out the right. Pause and inhale through the right. Switch the fingers, exhale through the left. Pause and inhale through the left. Switch the fingers, exhale through the right. Pause, then inhale through the right. Switch the fingers and exhale through the left. So you'll follow this pattern for a few more breaths. Do 
do one more. And we'll release both nostrils. Inhale through both sides. Exhale, we'll release the hand. All right, now let's come back into the chair. If you'd like to use a blanket to make yourself feel more comfortable or place a block under the feet to help feel more grounded, please feel free to pause the video, make any adjustments you need. Again, we're just gonna notice all the places where our body's supported by the chair, by the earth, by the floor. The spine is nice and tall, opening up the chest, shoulders away from the ears. And you can have the gaze um, soft with the eyes open or you can gently allow the eyes to close. Feeling the coolness behind the eyes. Noticing the place where your body, where your seat is contacting the chair. This is the root chakra. This is the chakra that controls your stability and survival. And then if you move your awareness up to the place, maybe about four fingers below the navel, this is the sacral chakra. The seed of your creativity and um, sexuality. And then at the base of the solar plexus is the solar plexus chakra. And this is the seed of your self-confidence, your willpower, So these three lower chakras sort of represent your place in the material world. And then if you bring your awareness to the crown of the head, this is the crown chakra. So this is the chakra that unites us all with the divine, with God, whatever you call it. And if you bring your awareness to the place between the two eyebrows, this is called Anya or the third eye chakra. So this chakra helps us to um, engage with our wisdom and intuition. If you bring your awareness to the throat, this is the throat chakra. This helps us to speak our truth and hear our truth, guided by our divine wisdom. And if you bring your awareness to the heart, this is the meeting place between those lower chakras and the, and the higher chakras. The higher chakras that connect us to the divine, all that there is, and the lower ch chakras that um, connect us with the material world. The heart is the bridge between these two worlds, basically the spiritual world and the physical world. So on the inhale, maybe visualize a green light in the center of the heart, expanding out through the entire body. On the exhale, really feel that energy radiating out through the fingertips, the soles of the feet and the toes, the crown of the head. 
Feeling brighter with every breath. Filling up the entire body. Radiating out of the body, growing brighter, growing bigger. Filling up the entire room. The entire neighborhood. Taking a few moments here in the silent meditation. And if you start to feel distracted, just smile and bring your awareness back to your breath. and toes, making circles with the wrist, maybe making circles with the ankles, inhaling, bringing the arms up overhead, maybe taking a nice long body stretch, perambulating, stretching anything that needs to be stretched. seated position, 
Let's inhale and bring the arms up overhead, bringing the hands together on the exhale, taking the hands to the heart, coming back to your intention, honoring that intention, thanking it for guiding you through your practice. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face and the rain fall softly on your fields. Until we meet again, may God hold you in the hollow of his hand. Miss you guys.